Hello, uh, welcome to this GE Power webinar, Arc Flash Detection Safety by Design. My name is Iman Firuzi, um, Senior Global Product Manager for Protection and Control at GE Power. Uh, I'm a part of uh, a global substation protection product management team. You can read my uh, brief resume uh, from the screen. I've held a diverse set of roles covering uh, engineering, product management, uh, sales, marketing, uh, and consulting primarily in power industry. But uh, for the past several years, I've been focused on uh, switch gear applications, including protection and control. Uh, what I want to share with you today is what we learned uh, about ArcFlash over the course of the product development, looking at various applications, learning from standards, uh, working with customers, and deploying best practices. This presentation is uh, primarily around uh, raising awareness about ArcFlash and how uh, we can deal with it. I'm going to talk about ArcFlash phenomenon, uh, the definition, properties, impacts, etc. I'll briefly go over uh, standards, um, hazard assessment methods, and also mitigation techniques uh, to better understand the existing technologies. Obviously, this is not a sales pitch, but um, we'll shift the emphasis on uh, one of the technologies, Arc, uh, Arc Flash Relays, because it's very popular and also the vastness of the topic does not allow us uh, to cover all in one session. Uh, then I'll walk you through uh, some applications with Arc Flash Relays. Uh, this is a very interesting section. You'll learn how Arc Flash Relays can be applied and how uh, some simple tactics can significantly uh, improve safety and enhance reliability of the system. Uh, okay, let's uh, address this first point. What is arc flash? Let's uh, take a closer look. Arc flash is not electrocution. It actually deals with heat and pressure. It's one of the deadliest uh, electrical incidents. Uh, while arc flashes are entirely preventable, an average of 30,000 arc flash incidents still occur um, every year five to ten incidents per day only in the U.S. 6,000 to 7,000 people are treated annually in burn centers uh, with arc flash injuries, and one to two deaths occur per day. Over 2,000 individuals uh, per, per year had to visit burn centers for hospitalization. Uh, these numbers are just statistics which um, have been compiled from various worldwide uh, sources and even more uh, disturbing is the fact that these numbers could be low estimates because uh, many hospitals don't track uh, the source of burn injury, in injuries. Contrary uh, to popular belief, 80% of fatalities is due to burns, not shocks. Uh, these numbers should be enough to get everyone's att everybody's att attention. What is arc flash? We have seen arc flashes many times. Lightning is a very good example. NFPA and OSHA associations have their own definitions for arc flash, which is more uh, from the hazard or safety perspectives. But, but uh, this definition, which I'm going uh, I'm going to give you, is more technical in my view. Uh, so, uh, it's a flashover of um, uh, current through air or the vapor of uh, the arc terminals, uh, terminal materials from one exposed live conductor to another or to ground. Uh, the resistance of uh, this electron passage creates a voltage drop in the arc depending upon the arc length and the system voltage. Arc behavior is just slightly different in high voltage and low voltage. Well, uh, arc flash has some interesting properties. Uh, temperature of the core of an arc can reach to 20,000 degrees Celsius in just one millisecond while surface of the sun is just 5,000 degrees Celsius. Uh, so, four times. Uh, some arcs can reach, uh, reach 50,000 degrees, uh, degrees Celsius, and the only higher temperature source known on, on Earth is laser, which uh, with uh, 100,000 degrees uh, Celsius. Therefore, it's a very hot phenomenon. A, pro a projectile created by an arc flash can fly uh, at 1,000 kilometers per, uh, per hour, uh, and a pressure wave upwards of 11 tons per uh, square meter, caused by copper expanding 67,000 times when vaporized. 
It means uh, one inch of copper expands to be the size of a refrigerator. Sound level, a sound level can reach uh, to the threshold of pain and can cause immediate hearing um, nerve damage. Um, throat and uh, vocal cord resonance occurs, and it's like a very loud uh, rock concert at, uh, at, the, at the speakers. Uh, if you look at the top right hand side, you, uh, you see ArcFlash has, has no unique light spectrum which we can use as a detection method. But we know that the spectrum has a strong uh, copper lines due to the connections like cable and bus bars. Uh, optical frequency is twice the power frequency which is actually expected due to um, zero crossing. Uh, another interesting fact about arc flash is a dramatic uh, rise in amplitude um, it can happen as fast as one millisecond, as I said. Uh, this amplitude variation can be used as a detection method. So arc flash can, can oscillate and escalate if, if not constrained. It's called Jacob, Jacob's ladder uh, phenomenon. A single phase fault can engulf and involve uh, other conductors in only a couple of cycles. First step to assess uh, the hazard level is to estimate the incident energy. Why? Because the amount of energy released defines the um, intensity of arc flash. Uh, we don't really get into um, too much how uh, it's calculated, but we'll take a look at uh, Ralph uh, Lee's arc model, which is used by IEEE standard. Remember, Every model has its own pros and cons, and Lee's equation is used for systems above uh, 15 kilovolt um, in open air. I specifically picked this one because it's easier to grasp. Um, what are the main factors? Three-phase um, symmetrical uh, sh short circuit current or bolted fault um, is, is the main one. Arc behavior is different in low voltage versus high voltage. Um, as I mentioned, it's just 50 to 60 percent of the bolted current uh, due to the voltage drop in low voltage. But in high voltage, it, it's just slightly lower than, than that. That explains why we have different models for various voltage levels. Um, another factor um, is the event time or a fault duration, which is obviously tied to the tripping time. A type of equipment, um, I mean, switchgear type, for example, system voltage, and also type of the system grounding, either it's solidly, uh, solidly or impedance grounded, or also uh, some drivers. Um, on top of that, characteristics in vary strongly with, um, with these factors. Environmental condition, Form of the energy released, either it, it can be heat, light, you know, pressure, uh, material of electrodes, um, arc length, spacing between conductors and insulation used, um, arc condition like plasma forming, how it, it forms, uh, characteristics of, um, of enclosure, and also um, a method of interruption, I mean, you know, CT plus relay uh, plus uh, breaker chain. Well, uh, there are um, many causes for arc flash. Accidental dropping of tools or broken parts may cause momentary short circuit and uh, initiate arcs. Uh, on the one hand, aging components, corrosion or impurities, a resulting deterioration of insulation, and, and, and on the other hand, uh, Poor workmanship, like, uh, you know, such as loose connections or damaged insulation can compromise the quality of connections. Corrosion weakens the contact between conductor terminals, increases um, resistance through contamination, and results in heat generation and sparks may be produced. Uh, pollution on um, insulation, insulating surfaces can provide a path for current, allowing to flash over and create arc, arc discharge across the surface, that can develop into greater arcs. Few more vapor uh, of chemicals can reduce the breakdown voltage of, uh, of air and cause arc flash. That's another uh, one. Uh, condensation of vapor and uh, water dripping can cause tracking on the surface of insulating materials, resulting in, in uh, flashover to ground and pot potential escalation to uh, arcing. 
Another cause can be improper design or uh, improper equipment selection, such as utilizing circuit breakers with lower short circuit ratings. Arc flash can be uh, it can also be caused by by a poor rat or a snake prowling into the switch gear trying to escape from the cold. In terms of hazards, um, heat is probably the worst one. Uh, to put it into perspective, skin cell death uh, occurs at 96 degrees Celsius, while hot gases, melt drops, and thermal radiation can reach thousands of uh, degrees Celsius. Pressure waves caused by uh, expanded vapor uh, can throw workers across room or knock them off ladders. Uh, shrapnel can penetrate body co and causes injuries. Extreme light and sound outbursts, outbursts um, can cause uh, vision and uh, hearing damage or loss. Toxic and heated gases can, can cause internal injuries through inhalation. Uh, people can be injured, maimed, or even killed. Such incidents can impact continuity of service um, and cause unplanned downtime by damaging the equipment. Cost of repair, uh, treatment, uh, and sometimes the litigation are also considerable. Uh, these costs um, can cost the company millions of dollars per incident and can potentially bankrupt smaller companies with, with less capital. Therefore, art flash is a very, um, important, is very important for almost all industries and, uh, and uh, appropriate preventive measures are crucial to maintain safety, to, uh, ma safety of personnel at, at workplace. All right. Um, what is, what is the damage mechanism and how does it develop? Let's take a closer look. Uh, optical emission happens right after the onset of arc flash. Pressure reaches to its peak in less than a half cycle, but it disappears very quickly. Look at the diagram. Whatever happens within 5 to 10 or 20 uh, milliseconds uh, drives the level of, da uh, the, 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 level of the damage. The type of the, the damage uh, after 100 milliseconds is pretty much thermal. That, that results in melting of not only conductors, but also um, internal parts of uh, the switch gear, which obviously cannot tolerate that heat, uh, as well as a very hot and expanded vapor. Uh, the heat can pretty much vaporize every material. Uh, this is why uh, there is no unique spectrum of light. I gave you a general explanation of the damage mechanism, but uh, what we really care about is actually how it works in an enclosure. Uh, because, you know, switch gears are the heart of any industrial facilities electrical system. There are four major phases uh, from the pressure perspective, uh, which is a result of uh, the heat, actually. Uh, in the first phase, released energy overheats the air and the pressure reaches to its maximum in less than 10 to 20 milliseconds. Uh, millisecond. The remaining volume of the air gets heated up by radiation and convection. Uh, but in this second phase, a piece of equipment blows apart to create an opening through which uh, heated air can escape. The pressure peaks and then decreases with the release of hot air as well as arc products. In the third phase, though, um, uh, the, uh, the arcing continues and the superheated air is forced out with almost constant pressure. And last phase is pretty much thermal. The temperature inside the switch gear um, nears that of an arc flash and lasts um, till arc is quenched. All metals and insulating material undergo erosion, may melt and, uh, you know, expand many, many times, produce toxic fumes, and uh, also spray molten metal. Everything's happening, everything is happening in milliseconds here. Uh, next item on the ag agenda is um, mitigation techniques. Uh, we are not really uh, talking about, you know, prevention techniques. Uh, the fact is uh, um, we can't eliminate the hazard. Historically, um, electrical systems have been designed uh, considering pre prevalent standards like IEEE uh, or IEC. And arc flash hazard was not really a direct, direct consideration. Uh, the assumption was engineers would have to sacrifice uptime for safety in their designs. However, this 
uh, uh, you know, with increasing demand for 24-7 business operations, and users must make a call either shut off power for maintenance or upgrade and lose revenue or stay powered up but risk dangerous consequences. This environment is changing fast and the industry is heading toward innovations in system design, uh, equipment and protection to limit the hazard and users no longer have to make the compromise between safety and uptime. Uh, we are really starting to see a shift in buying pattern uh, because of that. This opens another chapter of power system uh, design. Mitigation in arc, uh, arc, arc flash prone equipment have become, has become a power industry safety focus in recent years. Modern um, systems seem to, be, uh, seem to be complex, but they consist of uh, components or subsystems working together to increase not only safety and re reliability, but also uh, efficiency to deliver energy around the clock. Safety by design uh, provides a concept to focus on all areas, including engineering and design, and not only administrative controls uh, and PPE. This is why a combined solution is probably the best solution to um, address arc flash hazards. A few years ago, the term arc flash uh, crept into our electrical jargon. Since then, uh, performing arc flash hazard study uh, remains a challenge. Uh, standard organizations um, began to develop standards, and today we have three uh, predominant organizations who publish standards for, for this purpose. Uh, OSHA 29 Code, uh, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, NFPA 70, different uh, versions uh, NFPA stands for National Fire Protection Association, and also IEEE 1584 are these standards. These standards provide uh, methodologies to estimate um, incident energy based on a theoretical uh, maximum value of power dissipated by, by um, arcing faults. Some believed to be conservative and some realistic. On the right-hand side, you can see the difference between NFPA and IEEE calculations for energy versus time, and you can see NFPA is more stringent. Other than that, NFPA defines protection boundaries. It also specifies the requirement of personal protective equipment, or PPE, uh, for workers within uh, the flash protection boundaries. Um, standards also uh, define... Um, uh, proper labeling and signage for each category. The hazard assessment identifies um, hazards, potential severity, uh, severity uh, of injury or damage, estimates um, the likelihood of occurrence, and determines if uh, protective measures are, requ are required. And uh, the first, but the first first step is to calculate uh, uh, the incident energy. As I said, the standards provide different methodologies, but uh, the contributing factors uh, remain almost the same. On the right-hand side, uh, some of the basic parameters uh, that factor in energy calculations are illustrated. Uh, there are four major guides for the calculation which are recognized to construct a mathematical model of the arcing. These calculations are conditional um, based upon the circumstance, and uh, each one has, it, has its own uh, pros and cons, as shown in the table. Uh, for example, although using equations result in um, accurate figures, but it's, some, it's time consuming and requires, uh, requires expertise. Uh, for large systems, though, uh, that arc flash must be calculated for every and each feeder best method is to use commercial softwares despite of the cost and expertise required. Let's discuss an example how we define and calculate zones uh, using IEEE method for a low voltage switch gear. This is an example by Easy Power Software that gives, uh, you know, results for individual feeders. Uh, let's take feeder F3, F3 for example, feeder F3. Uh, incident energy for a 23 uh, calculated, uh, a three-phase bolted fault uh, with uh, 
50 millisecond arcing time is 2.7 calories per square centimeter. And arc flash boundary is 80 uh, centimeter, which is based on uh, an empirically derived equation. Uh, power system softwares like ETAP, Easy Power, or the others provide system arc flash calculations based on various standards. Um, there are various strategies to address arc flash, either active or passive. <clears throat> arc flash, uh, active mitigation takes a proactive approach not only uh, to reduce incident energy but also exposure through um, the use, uh, through the active use of technology, design, or even maintenance practices. Uh, a, good, uh, a very good example is uh, bus part differential protection uh, uh, as, a, as an active method. Uh, passive mitigation, though, uh, is to use um, an equipment type, variant, or option, and is more of a preventive approach. Uh, what is clear is uh, one solution is not sufficient for all circumstances. I'll walk you through uh, these uh, six strategies with uh, top examples of each. Shielding uh, personnel is probably one of the easiest uh, ways um, of protection uh, against arc flash. Uh, the protection boundary is an imaginary sphere that surrounds the potential arc point within which a person could uh, receive a second degree burn if an arc flash were to occur and are based on potential heat energy uh, falling on the skin at a certain uh, distance. Uh, these are the boundaries, flash, uh, flash protection, limited approach, restricted ap approach, and last one is the prohibited approach um, boundary. Uh, it also defines proper uh, clothing uh, or personal protective equipment or PPE for each category. As shown in the table, PPE category 4 requires multi-layer clothing, which is more like a spacesuit. Uh, technologies to minimize equipment damage are one of the most effective uh, strategies, but could be costly. Arc resistant switch gears have been around for decades, and uh, it is designed to uh, redirect arc energy out of the equipment through dots or vents away from operators. Uh, all primary compartments are provided with uh, pressure relief uh, flaps uh, located on the top side of, of the switch gear. Any overpressure inside the compartment by an in internal arc, arc uh, will be released through the pressure relief flaps. Um, there are some IEC and ANSI standards defining the required type tests as well as the uh, structure or accessibility category. As an example, um, with type 1 NEMA switch gear, an, an operator can approach the front of the switch gear lineup and won't be exposed to the arc blast if it occurs. Uh, same type, uh, same categories uh, exist in IC standards uh, standard as well. There are some, uh, you know, extinguishing techniques uh, too. Um, the concept is uh, based on detection and removal um, of an arcing fault before it escalates into um, an arc blast and, uh, um, and, and not only that, but also elevated um, hazard risk category. G industrial solutions uh, arc wall switch gear is a very good example when, uh, when the relay detects uh, current spike and voltage drop at the same time it signals the um, containment uh, dome and trips the main breaker. Inside the dome, a plasma gun um, creates a second arc that uh, transferred the arc energy to the dome. It's very fast as, you know, it's as fast as eight milliseconds. Deploying preventive uh, maintenance tactics is another uh, impactful measure to control arc flash hazards. Interlocking systems are a set of mechanical parts to prevent uh, improper operation. For example, uh, the circuit breaker cannot be closed when uh, it is um, in between the connected position and test or disconnect position. Uh, most of the, you know, most of the uh, drought switch gears uh, nowadays are equipped with um, um, interlocking systems. 
The energy reducing maintenance switch uh, is a very simple but effective solution, which is described in two sections of 2017 uh, NEC 240 uh, standard, uh, Article 87 and 67. A maintenance switch is a simple way of temporarily uh, changing an overcurrent relay sensitivity and time delay characteristics. The advantage is uh, that fault clearing time and thus um, incident energy is greatly reduced uh, during maintenance. Uh, in the picture uh, on the left hand side, the relay uh, on the right hand side, the relay trips um, without any intentional uh, delay when maintenance switch is enabled uh, and arc flat and arc occurs. According to the equ equations, um, incident energy is inversely uh, proportional to the S square uh, of the distance. Protection relays have extensive uh, communications and control capabilities which we can utilize for remote operations uh, like, uh, you know, closing and opening switching devices which uh, may reduce the risk of arc flash in case of an internal, uh, internal fault for uh, greater safety and peace of mind. A, a remote racking system uh, allows an operator to operate a racking system from a remote location. It's a safe alternative uh, to manually uh, racking circuit breakers. It actually moves uh, service personnel outside the arc flash boundary, which uh, reduces the requirement for uh, technicians to wear a personal protective clothing or a higher PP category. Obviously, uh, reducing exposure to potential hazard can be a good strategy. It's always preferable to uh, work on de-energized equipment, but it will certainly impact the continue of, continuity of service. Equipment options like uh, insulated bus bars using heat shrinkable bus bar tubing, for example, uh, are good preventive measures. However, uh, it has its own disadvantages like, you know, Thermal performance of the switch gear can be impacted or um, it, it can complicate uh, performing thermal scans uh, with, uh, with, with IR cameras. Um, side section barriers, um, you know, separate and guard uh, exposed parts in adjacent sections or cubicles. Uh, on top of that, they'll also um, impede the propagation of an arc uh, through uh, equipment. Infrared scanning um, also uh, allows demographic inspection of connections with, uh, without um, opening doors or covers and while the equipment is operating under load. It's a big advantage there. Uh, the temperature of a loose connection is much higher than the um, adjacent connections, which may result in dangerous failure. Other impactful measure um, is a drought of or a drought of breakers when the door uh, is closed, or using uh, hinge doors versus bolted because bolt can be a source of arc flash itself. And on top of that, interlock uh, implementation requires hinge doors. And uh, last but not least, minimizing incident energy is probably one of the most impactful techniques. Given a basic understanding of contributing variables, energy is directly proportional to fault current and tripping slash arcing time. Obviously, reduction uh, in any of them results in um, limiting the energy release. Uh, grounding um, subject is a vast and debatable, actually, subject. Um, IEEE equations give a lower incident energy for solidly grounded systems as compared with resistant grounded, because, you know, single phase faults um, may quickly escalate to three phase faults. There are many ways to reduce short circuit current, either by uh, the amplitude or tripping time, current limiting fuses, current limiting circuit breakers, and using reactors are some, some examples. Utilizing fast protection elements, such as bus bar or transformer differential, uh, without compromising coordination is another method. A newer technology, though, which is actually a cost-effective solution, is arc flash detection relays. I'll explain it. I'll explain how it works. As I said, every solution has its own uh, pros and cons, uh, and in this table, um, you can see some examples. For example, um, although arc, arc resistant switch gears, um, switch gear solution seems to be the best. It's very 
uh, costly and switch gear uh, remains art resistant uh, as long as the door remain uh, closed. In conclusion, follow your company's uh, safety policies, procedures uh, when, when working on equipment. But remember, no single solution fits every situation and best strategy is combination of several tactics. All right, uh, let's talk about arc flash detection from, uh, from the relay standpoint. Uh, there are different protection strategies to detect and clear arc, arc faults, but uh, there are advantages as, and disadvantages associated uh, with um, each one. Uh, ZSI is a technique to transfer the trip, allowing an upstream relay to trip faster uh, on a fault uh, in its zone while maintaining coordination with downstream, but it requires communications for sure. Uh, bus or transformer differential relays are fast operating relays ensuring selectivity, but there is a chance of maloperation because of many factors and also they are, they, they are a bit pricey. Uh, our, fla our flash relays, uh, you know, have been around since early 90s. Um, and uh, there are uh, various detection techniques in that area. Um, there are three major techniques, light detection, light plus current, and pressure pl plus light. Light detection is fast, but uh, there is a high chance of false tripping there. Mixing light with current enhances reliability and provides good coverage, especially when loop sensors uh, um, are, are used but any physical obstruction can hinder detection. A pressure plus light technique doesn't need current for detection. It also can be used as a standalone arc flash detection device, um, you know, suitable for existing, existing installations as well as uh, new switch gears, but it is difficult to uh, test. You can see, you know, the G solutions uh, and the relays we have on the right hand side. All right, mm, this is the uh, most popular technique, which is uh, incorporated in uh, into GE products. Uh, it provides a faster uh, the response, which is more secure than light only. This protection is faster than ZSI or even differential. On the chart um, right hand side, um, you know, the, the chart right hand side illustrates that. Arc flash is two to four times faster than differential, and obviously much faster than IOC and TOC. Operation is supervised by a special high-speed overcurrent element to ensure security. Uh, an obvious advantage is that low, level, uh, low levels of uh, phase uh, and ground fault currents can be sensed, and uh, you know, actually, pickup can be even below the, the load current here. Speaking of uh, special element, conventional IOC elements have a response uh, time of uh, the order of 6 to 20 millisecond. Uh, this delay is not really acceptable for arc, arc flash de detection because IOC uh, should, should act as fast as um, uh, the arc detection. Results of an actual arc flash test performed in an external uh, lab in a low voltage switch gear is shown that um, you know, the operating time of the relay is 4.1 millisecond from the detection um, to the output cl closing. Uh, it's pretty fast. The contact output is solid state um, and you know the closing time is of the order of microseconds here. All right. Um, in terms of um, the application of sensors, point sensors are recommended for switchgear compartments that could uh, experience an arc flash in a single location, such as uh, the breaker compartment, for example. Uh, loop sensors, uh, though, are suitable for wider sections, like interconnected bus bar compartment of a switchgear lineup, because they can detect light through its entire length. It can be used to replace several point sensors, however, Loop sensors, uh, loop sensors won't distinguish um, at what location the arc occurred. A point sensor must be installed in a location clear of any obstruction that could uh, shield the sensor, but this risk is minimal for loop sensors. 
Sensitivity of both uh, is good, but point sensors is, uh, is probably more focused and easier to install uh, compared to loop fiber uh, that runs uh, you know, throughout the switch gear. The design of sensors is very uh, robust. Loop sensors, uh, loop sensor fiber is protected by cladding and a jacket, for example. Uh, ease of use is very important for complicated products such as relays. Um, so the light auto threshold feature uh, allows adaptive changes to ambient light without optical measurements um, uh, to determine settings. Uh, this really uh, simplifies installation. The integrity of sensors and connected fiber uh, is also checked by a short periodic heartbeat pulse signal on the transceiver, on the light transceiver. Let's go over some, some applications. Uh, one of the main applications uh, is lowering the incident energy, obviously. As explained before, hazard exposure is a function of distance and fault clearing time. That plays a vital role uh, in the amount of energy released. The table shows an example uh, of the impact of using arc flash uh, on limiting uh, arc duration, which you know results in overall energy reduction, and therefore more lenient PPE requirement uh, in some cases, if not all. So arc flash relay seems to be a strong complementary solution uh, to the other mitigation techniques. Although you should follow, you should be following your company. Uh, policies and procedures. Uh, the, the quantity of uh, low voltage, medium voltage substations, including uh, conventional, compact, and power mount, is probably more than any other types. Uh, one of the challenges in such applications is slow protection. Uh, traditional selectivity methods may not provide, you know, fast and accurate protection. Uh, switch gears are not typically arc resistant. Uh, because of the cost, um, which is very important for utility uh, utilities, uh, compact substation uh, footprint, uh, you know, is very small, especially when the MV switch gear um, piece um, is a GIS or compact AIS. So short workers distance increases hazard exposure. Um, the situation is even worse. Um, for underground substations, which are very popular in some countries. So personal safety and asset life can be impacted by internal, internal arc flash. The solution uh, can be uh, reducing fault clearing time within the protection chain, although functions like you know, differential or bus bar differential uh, are very fast, but um, it is not economical and also doesn't have a you know, perfect coverage for, for the entire substation. So what is the solution um, then, considering that uh, the, you know, the cost is a driver? Uh, a single 350 relay um, armed with um, arc flash and four sensors can pretty much cover the entire substation. Not only the medium voltage switch gear is protected, but also the downstream uh, low voltage panel and uh, medium voltage, low voltage, uh, low voltage bushings of the transformer are also uh, well covered in this solution. This is a novel application. It's low cost. It uh, just needs uh, one relay for the entire downstream. Uh, it's easy to implement and pretty fast. Um, no additional equipment is also required because, you know, the feeder re relay is there anyways. Bus protection is probably the most luxurious and fastest protection system, but when it comes to low voltage and medium voltage applications, it's, it's extremely costly and complicated to implement. Uh, Bosphor faults are high in magnitude, introducing thermal and mechanical stress on the entire switch gear, uh, affecting the entire system. Uh, there are many different topologies and it may reconfigure at any time, raising the chance of maloperation. Any fault on bus bar can have a detrimental impact on protection, production and process. Most of customers 
uh, cannot afford uh, placing lots of cities around uh, Bosphor with with a low impedance or high impedance relay to better protect their their MV uh, or LV installations. But there is a simple solution which is perceived as a complementary protection system uh, with arc flash detection. It doesn't require additional CTs or relays uh, or complex logic or, or even communications. Ease of implementation, cost, and speed, uh, which is comparable to bus bar differential, makes it really attractive. The speed of operation can be even faster than, uh, than the conventional bus bar differential, which is about 12 to 24 milliseconds. Another interesting application is, uh, um, is protection of unprotected or uncovered zones. Faults before CTs um, cannot be detected by conventional overcurrent on incoming feeders. Even if it can be, it cannot be cleared by the breaker as there is a still a path for current flow. Uh, protection coordination also results in a slow uh, fault clearing uh, by the upstream relay. Another challenge is the transfer trip or uh, zone interlocking. The zone interlocking uh, schemes are not necessarily fast enough because it can cause in, uh, it, it can increase the trip time by as much as 15 milliseconds um, to allow uh, the blocking signal enough margin to reach to the incoming relay. And uh, if used with a three to five cycle breaker, can cause an incident energy to be in higher PP levels. In this example, um, a 350 relay, um, you know, has been applied with uh, its four optional uh, optical sensors. Uh, two of them are designated to monitor the main breaker uh, here. Um, one of them for CT cable compartment, and one loop sensor here um, for the bus bar. The relay can trip uh, the breaker and um, uh, or trip the upstream breaker, uh, depending on which sensor detect the flash. Arc flash number one, number one is not detectable by IOC. Um, if it happens here, um, but relay uh, detects the flash at the breaker stabs, uh, for example, I, I mean the, uh, uh, the arc flash relay. Uh, current and flash of arc flash number two, though, is detected, this one. Then a 6150 goose message upon light detection operand for fault number one. Um, or um, arc flash detection operand for fault number two uh, can be used to transfer the trip uh, to the upstream substation. To improve reliability, arc flash detection can be used in conjunction with uh, under voltage supervision. This is another interesting application. As mentioned before, uh, bus bar faults um, can damage the equipment. Using arc flash on each relay for bus bar faults um, might not be viable or fast enough to transfer the trip, as I mentioned in the previous slide. Um, bus bar protection uh, in low voltage applications, um, you know, is also a challenge because of poor, poor CT performance, limited space, you know, very high short circuit currents, or cost, or even other factors. Having loop sensor solution. Uh, four different zones can be covered by just one 350. Hence, can a two bus application with two main breakers, um, tie breaker, and multiple feeders can be covered by just two uh, 350s, as shown uh, in the picture here. The zones covered are uh, breaker compartments, um, bus bar compartments uh, here, uh, VT compartments uh, and cable compartments. Um, connection between cubicles can be made using uh, the fiber extension or a single fiber uh, can be run throughout the whole switchgear lineup. That's another solution. Uh, loop sensors are uh, recommended uh, to be used because, you know, art flash can happen in multiple locations.
and uh, takeaways. Um, art flash happens every day and impacts everything from people uh, to processes. When specifying arc uh, mitigation features, keep it in mind that it should be a combination of solutions and no single solution fits every situation. One piece of the puzzle can be arc flash relays, uh, you know, which are fast and secu secure. When applying protection relays, make sure uh, they are devices with integrated arc flash detection that a single device covers for a wide area and is uh, easier to implement. It enhances worker safety and reduces equipment damage. It does not compromise protection for coordination. Downtime to repair uh, is also reduced and equipment uh, useful life is extended by uh, you know, reducing exposure. It is cost effective for enhanced protection, even for low-end applications like low-voltage uh, uh, or even medium-voltage applications. Ensure that the protection device has diagnostics feature uh, to ensure sen sensor health and detection reliability. In summary, arc flash relays give a fresh perspective to protection. It is beyond PPE and uh, it's becoming mandatory. Uh, that concludes uh, my presentation. Thank you um, for joining me today. Uh, as always, uh, if uh, you're looking for more information, please visit uh, our website, gegridsolutions.com.